In this video, I want to talk about tornadoes that don't get nearly as much recognition, so that way we don't forget these incredible but forgotten tornadoes. On June 27, 1955, a tornado would form on the Nebraska-Wyoming border. The tornado would continue southeast, straight towards the Weather Bureau office east of Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. During its 40-mile path, there would be multiple photos, video, as well as radar taken of this tornado. This rare F4 in western Nebraska is the first ever fully documented tornado, but for some reason, I almost never hear anyone talk about it. In 1974, Xenia, Ohio was hit by one of the strongest tornadoes in modern history. But most don't know, 26 years later, in the year 2000, it was hit by yet another violent tornado that went down almost exactly the same path. According to the local Shawnee Indians, the area of Xenia, Ohio was called the Land of the Devil Wind, which I can almost promise you was referring to tornadoes making me wonder how many other violent tornadoes happened in this location. It's unfortunate that this next tornado was forgotten. On July 13, 2004, a powerful tornado would form outside of the town of Roanoke, Illinois. This tornado would slowly move east, heading directly towards the Parsons Manufacturing Plant. All 150 employees took shelter in one of three reinforced concrete rooms put here for exactly this situation. Despite it taking a direct hit, there were zero fatalities, which should have made this situation serve as an example for all future tornado precautions. There's one EF5 that's almost never talked about, and that is the 2011 Rainsville EF5. This tornado is forgotten for a few reasons. Tuscaloosa, Phil Campbell, Coleman, Smithville were all much more notable tornadoes. The video captured by Charlene Stevens is, in my opinion, the best view of this tornado. You can see how the Rainsville tornado was a strong multi-vortex tornado. It even appears to produce the dead man walking, which is only seen in the strongest tornadoes. Less than a month later, on May 24th, a tornado outbreak would occur across six different states. The tornadoes that occurred on this day were extremely strong, including one EF5, the El Reno Piedmont EF5, the most remembered tornado from this day. I think it's quite possible a few other tornadoes were capable of achieving the EF5 rating, especially the Canton Lake EF3. This is the strongest, most menacing looking tornado I have ever seen on video. Also, both the Goldsby and Chickasha tornadoes were given a rating of EF4 with highest winds of 200 miles per hour, just one mile per hour short of the EF5 rating. Had any of these tornadoes been rated EF5, I can almost promise you they would have been much more remembered. It's also worth noting, this outbreak occurred two days after Joplin, which overshadowed even the El Reno Piedmont EF5. Sometimes entire tornado outbreaks are somewhat forgotten. That was the case on these two days, May 4th, 2003 and April 14th, 2012. Both high risks that produced over 80 tornadoes, yet for some reason, they're never talked about. Let's start with the May 4th tornado outbreak. In total, 87 tornadoes would form three of which were violent EF4 tornadoes. One tornado stands out the F4 that went through Kansas City. At one point, a horizontal vortex rode the front side, showing that this tornado was extremely strong. Now let's go back to the April 14th tornado outbreak. Only one would achieve EF4 status, the Salina EF4. This tornado was an absolute beast. 
The most epic video was taken by Team Twistex when the tornado crossed the road right in front of them. You could also see a large horizontal vortex manifest in front of the tornado, just like the horizontal vortex seen in the 2003 Kansas City tornado. These tornadoes were similar in a lot of ways. They looked similar, they happened relatively close by, and for some reason, they're both almost never talked about. In my last video, I covered the Pilger, Nebraska event where four different EF4 tornadoes were spawned by the same supercell. But most don't know about the other tornado. In Burwell, Nebraska, a classic looking tornado would form. Up close, this was an incredible tornado, but the true beauty is seen from the further vantage point. The tornado was below unbelievable supercell structure. Had this tornado occurred on any other day, I almost guarantee it would be considered one of the best tornadoes of 2014. On the night of December 10th, 2021, history would take place. Over 70 tornadoes would occur, and of those 70, one would steal the show, the Mayfield EF4. And while this tornado is extremely interesting, many of the other tornadoes this night are not talked about nearly enough. To the north, a storm would track over St. Louis, producing two EF3 tornadoes. The second EF3 would directly impact an Amazon warehouse, taking the lives of six workers. To the south, another storm would produce multiple long track EF3 tornadoes, one of which directly impacted the large town of Bowling Green, Kentucky, killing 17, making this the second most deadly tornado of the outbreak. Further south, another storm would put down multiple tornadoes, narrowly missing the large city of Nashville, Tennessee. This tornado outbreak is most known for the Western Kentucky tornado, but I think another important lesson was what not to do at warehouses. In both the Amazon warehouse and the candle factory in Mayfield, Kentucky, employees were forced to ride out storms in buildings that are nowhere near capable of surviving the winds within a tornado. If only there was another similar situation we could have learned from. This next tornado actually happened this year. On the night of March 24, a single storm would end up dominating the atmosphere, producing the Rolling Fork EF4 tornado. The storm continued on well past Rolling Fork, producing two other EF3 tornadoes, the Winona tornado and the Amory tornado. Radar scanning the storm showed that the Amory tornado had winds higher than the Rolling Fork EF4. Also, the Amory Tornado's path was less than a mile from the path of the Smithville EF5. And what's crazy, the Amory Tornado was actually wider than the Smithville EF5. 